This video is sponsored by Established Titles. A few months ago, while I was in class, some people were debating what they thought about the most recent season of Attack on Titan, Season 4, Part 1. And one thing that caught me off guard while listening, since, okay, I'm a bit of a dumbass socially that can't insert myself into that sort of thing easily, was that someone really disliked the character of Gabby. To be clear, it wasn't just that they disliked the character that caught me off guard, but that they said, specifically, that she was a badly written character. I'd seen similar opinions online before, of course, it's sort of a meme in the Attack on Titan fandom, but that was definitely the first time I ever heard someone express that opinion so... bluntly. Not, Gabby's kind of a bad character, not, I hate Gabby, not even, I really dislike Gabby. Straight up, they thought the way that Gabby was portrayed in the series wasn't done in a well-written fashion, and that the series would have been better off without her. I didn't say anything then, remember, social idiot, but almost like a spark in my brain, it gave me the idea for this video. I don't know if that one guy really represents a majority of anyone or whatnot, I could be completely wrong and a bunch of guys might already be commenting how obvious what I'm talking about is, but even then, I still want to talk about this since it's a good video discussion for more reasons than one. But look at me, I haven't even said what Attack on Titan is yet, so, you know, just a heads up beforehand. Massive spoiler warning for all of the Attack on Titan anime. If you have not seen the series up to this point, I would highly recommend watching all of it before getting here. You will not regret it. Any major spoilers or ruin amazing mysteries the show builds up is your own fault, and I take no responsibility. Please fill out the consent form before entering. With that said, let me give you a quick recap of what's necessary to know before going knee-deep in the trenches. Attack on Titan is the story of Eren Jaeger, or more broadly, the people of Eldia, living on the island of Parody, who, unbeknownst to their history, had ancestors that gained the powers of the Titans, these massive figures they controlled and supposedly used to wipe out people for a millennia, including having nine specific Titans stronger than all the others. At one point over a hundred years before the story, a certain king named Fritz used the hardening abilities of several million colossal Titans to erect three great walls where Eldians could live peacefully removing all the memories of their history in the process. On the other side of the world, however, in the time that Eldia slowly forgot its past, the nations they originally destroyed grew more powerful and technologically advanced. Specifically, the land of Marley would grow to continually hate the Eldians, discriminating against any living among them, even if they were only descendants, passing down a system of hate and self-loathing to make the Eldians feel worse than nothing, sectioning them off from Marleans and making them wear armbands to indicate their status. Any Eldian seen as out of line or traitorous in Marley were either killed or or arguably even worse, made to forcibly turn into titans against their will, losing all sense of self and attacking almost mindlessly, being let loose into the lands of parody over time, or for the purpose of attacking other nations. Eventually, the Eldians, no longer knowing their history with titans, began being attacked by these forcibly transformed ones, since Marley wanted to use them to keep the Eldians from leaving the walls. Slowly, the Eldians found the titans' weakness, the nape of their neck, which is later explained to have the Eldians' body in it, and developed gear specifically to fight them. Our main lead, Eren Jaeger, is the son of Grishy Jaeger, a restorationist from Marley who found his way to Parody after being given the powers of the Attack Titan, one of the nine leaders previously mentioned. He went to Parody after nearly being executed because his first son, Zeke, was convinced to turn them in or be killed himself, opting for the former since Grisha and Zeke's mother treated him more like a vessel for the Restoration's ideas instead of as their son. This becomes relevant later since Zeke grows up to inherit one of the other leading Titans, the Beast Titan, and attempts to find his way to Eren so they can join forces in a big master plan which isn't really all too relevant for this video. The point is, Eren didn't understand his roots until the third season, beforehand only knowing that the walls protected him and his friends from the Titans, and one day the walls were broken down by a group of abnormals, later discovered to be a few of the leader Titans controlled by Eldians in Marley's military, who allowed the forcibly turned Titans to get in and nearly kill 250,000 people, including Eren's mom. Eren goes to the army with his friends and trains for years, gets eaten by a Titan during another attack, and finds out he has the attack Titan, though he doesn't know his father gave it to him, eventually finds the traitors that broke down the walls in the first place, he, his friends, and the army make it to find they're on an island, and eventually, Eren makes a plan to infiltrate Marley and launch a counter-assault before they try completely destroying Parody and the Eldians along with them, believing that Eren will unfreeze the colossal titans that make up the walls to cause a rumbling, which would lead to everyone else around the world being stomped out. For everything to work out, the Eldians also gain the help of Zeke, along with several other Marleans willing to help out Eren. Gabby is one of a few kids we get to see in Marley who've joined the army and live their lives under the code that they're good Eldians who are only worth something if they can provide service to Marley, paying for the grievous sins of their ancestors and atoning for the devils of parody. They play a significant role in season 4 and basically lead the narrative up till the assault against Marley, and throughout the rest of the season, everything is split between the stories pertaining to Gabby and Eren. 
Whew, that was a lot to say, and I may have gone through that a bit fast. But remember, I'm going in thinking you already know this and just need a refresher, so hopefully that helped. And while we're talking about faraway lands and the ways they can be affected, that brings me to this video's sponsor, Established Titles. Have you ever wanted to be referred to as a lord or lady? Well, with Established Titles, thanks to an old Scottish tradition, by buying a square foot of land there, you can. Comes with a certificate and everything to brag about to your friends, or maybe even give as a last-minute Valentine's Day gift. In fact, I heard they're having a big Valentine's Day sale right now if you want to check that out. All preserved on a private estate in Aberdeenshire with a plot number to show you its exact location. You can even put Lord or Lady on your plane ticket if you want. They also plant a tree with every purchase by working with global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to help global afforestation efforts, not to mention preserving the beautiful woodlands of Scotland. If any of this sounds appealing to you, either check out my link in the description or go to establishedtitles.com slash just stop with promo code just stop and you'll get 10% off your purchase today. Thanks to Established Titles for sponsoring. With that out of the way, why is it that people generally hate Gabby? Before getting to the more major or potentially philosophical shit, I think the best place to start would be her personality. Gabby is someone who, at many turns early on in her side of the story, gets overconfident and self-boisterous. For every achievement she gets, she's really proud of it, and much of the time, she's pretty oblivious to Falco, her friend that ends up getting her out of trouble more times than once. When people complain about this as an issue, though, I never really understand how they don't get she's a kid whose self-worth is entirely dictated by the approval of those that abused her. Looking for any validation possible. From the first time we saw Gabby, she was willing to to go out onto the battlefield with no armor carrying a pack of explosives on her leg for the possibility of getting a sneak ambush while a machine gun was pointed at her, and there was not even a command for her to do it, she just decided that was a good idea. You think after that she'd be a bit proud and maybe get somewhat of an ego, especially with how much she's trying to inherit one of the special titans. She isn't malicious by any means, just a kid who derives her self-worth by how well she does on the battlefield. We don't need to like that she's cocky, as other characters point this out to her and don't go along with what she says saying, but it's not unreasonable for her to think that way in the first place, and we can't forget that Eren pulled a tough act at the start of joining the military too. The same thing is kind of true in her relationship to Falco, sharing similarities with how Mikasa tried to treat Eren, who was equally oblivious and more focused on himself. These aren't attributes of their characters we should fault them for, since we, as an audience, know it isn't from ill intent of any kind. Both had their reasons for acting as they did, so I'd say Gabby being a bit braggadocious and foolhardy to start doesn't take away anything, since we still get to to see a more logical, caring side to her in the relationship she has with Falco, worrying about him even if she's completely unaware of his true feelings for her. She also very much loves her family and friends in Marley who have treated her well, so it's obvious she isn't just a narcissist and nothing else. But that's not what people really hate about Gabby. At best, it's more of an afterthought. No, the moment everyone decided they hated Gabby was in episode 67, in which, amidst the Eldians leaving Marley without almost a scratch on them, Gabby and Falco sneak aboard their airship and she fires a shot right through Sasha, killing her minutes later. Why do we hate this scene, though? Is it because Gabby is a terrible person? Not exactly. Let's remember, she's climbing onto an enemy vessel, one which she's only heard of previously, after they decimated her home, got multiple of her friends killed right before her eyes, took the Warhammer Titan's ability along with Zeke, harmed Peak, Galliard, and Reiner, destroyed her city's docks, and killed thousands of innocent people. From her perspective, even killing one of them, who she's been taught are devils, would be some kind of achievement for her. Therefore, if looking at the situation from her perspective, it makes total sense that she'd do this, why do we hate it? Because we know Sasha, and have got to see her develop over the course of three seasons at this point. She went from a basic comic relief potato girl in the beginning to something much more, letting us see into her self-sacrificial side, her reluctance to show where she was from, and how even though she was more scared than anyone, she kept fighting because she wanted to make a difference. That was Sasha Browse, and for many people, she was their favorite character. She was insanely lovable, and with this moment, we know we'll never get to see Sasha again. We feel what the characters feel since, almost like them, we've gotten to know her and the others for several years years now, so it's all the more heartbreaking to see one of them die. But what was Sasha to Gabby? Another devil. In particular, Gabby saw Sasha snipe two of the only Marlians that were ever nice to her right in front of her. Gabby didn't get to know who Sasha was, much like Sasha and the others didn't get to know who many of the Marlians they killed were. That's war. And after Gabby and Falco sneak their way into parody, inadvertently running into Sasha's family, she finds out more about the person she killed and how it affected them. For the first time seeing a family of Eldians grieve for someone like Gabby did for her friends. Previously, she didn't seem to even think of the possibility that 
that devils could have family, so meeting them starts her down the path to understanding how wrong she really was to shoot. And that actually brings me to the final point of why people generally hate Gabby, and that's how long it takes for her to change after arriving in parody. When she meets a girl her age for the first time, Gabby tries to hit her with a rock, and when that girl reveals that she knows Gabby and Falco are from Marley, she tries to stab that girl with a pitchfork. When that girl takes her in and treats her like family, Gabby still blames every bad thing that happens to her on the demons of parody. For the longest time, she considers everyone on parody as less than nothing, deserving every bad thing that happens to them because they're less than human. She sees her killing of Saja like she bags some game for a hunt. All of this keeps building, with Gabby being unable to change her thinking in any way until, ironically, the person who showed kindness to her tries to kill her, as she was the girl Sasha saved in season 2 and raised as a sister. Something about recognizing that loss, seeing how it affected people who did nothing but be kind to her even in times when she could be irrational, finally knowing there was more to the Eldians than murder spanning thousands of years ago. And though a lot of people will hate on the process for how she got to that point, it was all in service of developing her character as an example of what Marley did to not just Gabby, but all Eldians in their care. She had the same phrase drilled into her every day that she was only worth as much as she could provide for Marley, and needed to pay for the sins of people so old she could never have even known them. And when that happens so consistently as a vulnerable child, eventually it'll get ingrained. For the first several episodes of Season 4, we saw Gabby and her friends interact, having fun together despite their circumstances. We were given the opportunity to sympathize and like both her and the friend group, and yet they could never be happy for long, since it showed weakness which could be exploited, giving people a chance to treat them worse. And they all just took it because what else could they do? That was how the world worked to them. Every time a character even thought about how losing their life for Marley might not be in their best interest, they were forced to rethink their words and make it clear they were lucky to live in Marley at all. And Gabby came to accept it more than any of them, becoming the prime example for everything wrong with Marley's treatment of Eldians. In a way, every time she restated the propaganda pushed onto her by Marley, Gabby may have just been saying it to convince herself, becoming more and more unsure as she went. Gabby's journey was about seeing the error of what she was taught and rising above it to become her own fully realized person, free of the teachings that bound her hostage for so long and making the decisions she felt were important. Which leads me into why you should hate Gabby. But just stop, why? You just spent the last however many minutes explaining why the reasons for people hating Gabby as a character don't reach deeper into her intended purpose and worldview. Why is it now that you're telling us to hate her? Because she's intentionally written as someone you're supposed to hate. Let me give a quick lesson. There's a big difference between having a badly written character and having a character that, on a thematic level, you should feel hatred towards. What do I mean by that? Well, like I said, Gabby represents a system. The worst parts of her all relate to what Marley and its system of hatred have led to, only breeding more irrational hatred and loathing. If you couldn't get the allegory already, Eldians and Marley are meant to represent Jews in World War II. Armbands, discrimination, literally living in what they call internment camps, the whole thing. And Gabby is a pure offspring of that. You feeling anger towards Gabby is entirely natural. Saying that disliking Gabby is wrong isn't the point of this video, if I didn't make it clear before. You're supposed to loathe her, just not as a character. All things considered, she's excellently written and conveys the exact message Hajime Isayama is trying to communicate with her. What's really the thing you hate isn't Gabby, it's what she and her actions stand for, and that's exactly how you're supposed to feel about it. You should despise what Gabby's done in service of Marley. You should feel a sense of relief whenever she's called out for it. And that's how you know the show is doing it intentionally. Everyone around Gabby, from Falco to the Browses to the Eldians in general, all describe what she's doing as ludicrous. They all catch on faster than her about just how wrong what she was taught is, and it's those people that are eventually able to snap her out of it. A badly written version of this would be Gabby doing all these atrocities she's done, and never facing repercussions, never being called out, or being taught why what she was doing was wrong, instead changing on the fly without any buildup. That isn't what happens though. And furthermore, I feel like Gabby is one of the most important characters in Attack on Titan Season 4, for not only how much she represents on the allegorical side, but on the more meta one as well. To lay it out a bit more simply, Gabby is another version of Eren. Let me explain. Gabby, like Eren, grew up in an environment where everything they learned about themselves or others was through the perspective of lies or half-truths. They never got a full picture of what the world was actually like because of the biased worldviews given to them, whether out of genuine ignorance, a want for normalcy, or outright hatred. Eventually, those places that instilled into them such specific values were attacked by an unknown entity they'd only heard of as monsters beforehand, destroying their homes, killing friends and family, and leaving no mercy for them whatsoever. And after that interaction, they decide to hate that which attacked them without hesitation, no longer caring about anything else other than taking them down. 
By going deeper into the fray, however, both discover the other side of the coin. Why exactly did they attack? What makes them tick? Where do they come from? What do they think? And in the pursuit of knowledge, their perspectives and ideals start to break down around them, making them question if the world they believed in to exist really did at all. Then, it comes to a point where both have to make a decision. Are these people really all their enemy, or is it better to think of it in less black and white terms? Aaron, at least to everyone around him, chose the latter. He became not only Marley, but the whole world's enemy for the sake of his friends, wanting them to live as freely as possible. As the series continued, Gabby seemed to be going down the same path for the sake of her family and those she cared about in Marley, but instead, she chose to fight not against the world or the Eldians, but against Aaron, breaking their reflection by going down an entirely different route in her thinking. Gabby still wants all the Eldians and Marley to be set free, and she doesn't want to give Marley what they want, so she chooses to do what she thinks is best for the Eldians, her friends, and herself. For that reason, I consider Gabby important not only in the context of Marley and how flawed its ideology is and always has been, helping give us a better picture of war and what people will go through when this kind of thing actually happens, but she also serves as a perfect dichotomy between herself and Aaron, making the same choices he was forced to do in her place. And whether her decisions may be similar or opposite, it in turn comments on Aaron in a unique way. Both are outcomes of the situations they didn't have a choice being put into, and they each grew to be immensely different from what they started out as, whether for the better or for the worse, and I can't imagine Attack on Titan being the same without both of them. But what do you think? Do you still hate Gabby and think she's badly written? Am I a stupid doo-doo head with shit takes? I don't know. Let me know. I've been just stop. And always remember, a hateable character and a badly written character are two different things. See you in the next one.